ready. Welcome to Roadmap. Is this uh, season one, episode four? Four? Episode four. I think it's episode four. And we're back at the studios at Falcon 7. Thank goodness. And we've got an exciting... Oh, let me introduce my co-host again, Carly Hathaway. CarlyHathaway.com, San Diego. We've got an exciting uh, lineup of people over the next few weeks. Next week, we have Kari Kohler from Chicago. You're going to love that. The week after, we have Brianne Llewellyn, Oklahoma City. We've got some great lineups. People doing two, three, taking two, three, four listings, and we and even sometimes five listings a week, a week, a week, a week, a week. And that's the way that plays. Okay, so Carly, let's before we introduce our guest today, and she's here in our studio, so we'll have some fun. Uh, let's talk about the Vulcan Seven Challenge. What do you remember about the Vulcan Seven Challenge? Well, the Vulcan Seven Challenge, I think, is really exciting. What what you can do, and I think everyone should definitely take the challenge, is go see a more audio, a little closer to your audio. There we go. Hear me better? Yes, that helps. So basically, what you want to do is go shadow an agent that is using this system. You know, go see a different agent once a month in different areas. You know, go, you know, drive or fly, meet them in the evening, have dinner, shadow them in the morning, and then get back home, you know, after lunch. It's a great way to kind of exactly see how people are doing work. I think Perfect. Every, every seven days, Every week, I mean, no, at once a month, that's what it is. It's 12 times a year, not every seven days. That's this show. A lot. Once a month, fly out or drive four or five hours to another market. That evening, have dinner with who you're going to go shadow. 98% of the times, if you contact them, they will say, sure, come, I'll show you what I do. Then get to the office early in the morning, take lots of notes, record them, meet them for lunch, head back home. Use the copycat principle. If they're taking two, three, four listings a week. Pretty soon, very quickly, you will. At the end of a year, you have 12 friends all making a million dollars. And we have, Carla, we have people that say, if, you know, yet yeah, some people on this call say, well, I don't need to make or want to make a million dollars. You know, five, uh, you know, folks, poverty is not that glamorous. The best thing you can do, if you only want to make 400000 a year, and that's fine, is... Make a million and give the way around, give the rest away. Give it to other people. You can put that to work in so many ways if you only want to make three or four hundred thousand. But you can get there so quickly. That's the whole idea. This you can get there quickly. And we're going to go into real specifics, uh, and we're going to our next guest is actually going to give several bullet points on what somebody starting up should really be paying attention to. So. Um, let me go ahead and welcome our next guest, our guest for this week, Jennifer Mertland, Cincinnati. Hi, Carly. She's Hi. so tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so Jennifer Mertland is here in Cincinnati, Team Synergy, yes. and we're excited to have you here. Um, Thanks. How many listings did you take last month? 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and may I share a story? Yes. May I share a story of how when you and I first met? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. We were in a real estate office, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And I would get to the office at about 10 to late. And she was always there, always there every morning. She was already there. And then, of course, nobody else comes in for hours, but that's a normal, real, about estate. Noon. That's a normal real estate <laughs> office. So, and, and I noticed she was calling people and she was listing property. And, and, and what time did you come in in the morning? About... I think it was about six. It's six, six, six. What do you do at six? Well, you get everything ready for the day, role play. You and role play? What time do you role play? Seven. Seven? On the phone at 7 a.m. role playing with somebody? Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't know what to say. Great. So I anyway, so I walked by and there's a sign on her door. It says March listings taken. It's the beginning of March. It's March 1. It's, and she has one, two, three, four on there. And I go, I said, I said, Jen, what are you going to do the rest of the month? And she went, ah. 
And so the next day I come in and the sign says March, listings taken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's true. I go, that's a lot better. <laughs> okay. Three weeks later, she goes, three weeks into the month, she goes, I've already listed 12 homes. And I was super proud of myself. She was very proud. <laughs> and I said, they're all little homes. And she was like, ah. <laughs> and so from then on, she started listing a lot of property and they were nice homes. Oh, so, yeah, my uh, average price, like the first year was about 87,000. And now it's 214,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you could touch this wall and touch <laughs> this wall. And it was the whole house back there. Oh some of those, some of those. So a lot's changed. And you've been doing this how many years? Seven years. Seven years. What, what area are you in again? Uh, Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Okay, got it. Okay, so I wanted to, you shocked me the other day. No. You, and, and I want, That's hard. I want, I want you to, <laughs> Kind of tell them a little bit about. So first, let me to put this in context. How old are you now? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven years old. And I said, "Well, where do you want to be five years from now?" And you said, "I'm going to be retired." I am going to be retired, and I'm like, "How does that work?" And you said, "Well, with investment properties." And so how I many started do you buying. Own? How many do you own? Well, I started buying in 2010, and so now I own 31 units. 31 and. They're almost all paid almost for. Almost all, yeah. They're almost all paid for. Another five years of accumulating property. Yeah, that's why I live in a crappy house so I can buy investment properties. <laughs> and that's another story too. We've had fun with that. I teased her about the house she lived in. She went out and bought a big one. But so, so yeah. Okay, so that means you're going to retire. And then I turned that one into an investment property. So back yeah. to a small one. <laughs> so, she keeps going back and forth. But I mean, look at it, folks. If you if you are this focused at 42, you can have pass, unlimited passive income and go have fun. Now, right. I don't know what will happen at 42. I know what she's like. I can't imagine her sitting on the front porch. Well, you know, we'll, no. we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. She may get a little greedy, but we'll find <laughs> out. So, so doubtful. Probably more properties. More properties. Yeah. Many, many, many more properties. So there are a lot of people, I can see, uh, I see an agent on here in Dallas right now, sitting there uh, in Dallas, Texas, watching us. I see another agent over in, uh, looks like they're in, they're in Minneapolis. And I see one in Phoenix right now. And they, and all three of the ones I'm looking at right now, they're newer to the business. They didn't even take three listings last month. If you wanted to give them a simple outline of six, eight, 10 points, what would you tell them, what, in, a, in a simple fashion, what would you tell them they need to do? What are some of the key things they need to do in order to, to make that started. happen? Yeah, to get that, ha to get, get the ball rolling so that maybe next month they take one a week from now on until they're ready yeah. for two and then until they're ready for three. You know, how do they get that going? What, what would you tell them? Well, a lot of things, but <laughs> first I just listened to Ren and I made my board from four to 20, <laughs> but I also, I got a coach um, and I have a coach now. Uh, so I think that's really important because for me, the coach and, and you all expand my mind. I remember I sat at a Mike Ferry event and I watched Denise Swick and this was, you know, when I first started. So about seven years ago. Hmm. And at that time she said that she was, her goal was a hundred units. I was like, a hundred? I can do a hundred. But until that moment, I had it hadn't even crossed my mind that you could do a hundred deals in one year. So just with people who do more, I think your Vulcan Seven Challenge is yeah. great. I used to visit Bernie Gallerani in Nashville all the time. Mm -hmm. And that really does expand your mind. So definitely a coach. Mm -hmm. Follow the advice of people that have been there, like Ren, like Carly. I just, I, I just tease. <laughs> That's the only better that I can. That works. <laughs> um, she gets mad and gets even. So it works right. Out. Exactly. Can you expand a little bit on the um, four and twenty? Oh yeah, the where I thought that four listings in a month was good, and it is. It, it's fine, but it's definitely not capacity. For me and what I wanted to do and the goals that I wanted to achieve. And that's, and, and Ren knew that. And that's why he 
made fun of me and was like, this is crazy. You can, you know, and then I thought to myself, this is crazy. Like I can do more than that. And it was amazing that when I had the visual representation of the 20, it like happened. And so I think that's important because every time I think of something bigger than what I'm currently doing, we make a visual presentation of it. So something simple as I really wanted a cleaning lady like to come every week because I hate cleaning. So <laughs> I made a board and I said, I want a Lexus ES350 and I want a cleaning lady. So guess what I have now? I have a Lexus ES350 2017 and I have a cleaning lady every week. It's beautiful. That's a wonderful story. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. What else should those that guy in Phoenix, that gal over there in Dallas and the one in Minneapolis, what, what else should what they else be should doing they do? specifically? Well, the other... they, they, they're, they've got a piece of paper or they're on their uh, keyboard typing notes of okay. what you need them. To, what do you want them to do in the next seven days? They're going to come back nice. here next week and they're going to hear Kari Kohler. Between now and then, what, do they, what action steps should they be taking? One, get a coach for sure. Um, secondly, I got an assistant right away. Mm -hmm. um, I knew my skill set was being on the phone and selling, and I'm terrible at paperwork. So I did get an assistant right away, and I had belief in myself that I would be able to pay her because <laughs> I didn't have any money. <laughs> and I never missed her paycheck, <laughs> so I was able to do that. Um, and then... I mean, those are the big two things. And then show up to work on time every day. What does that mean? It means it's the easiest. What's on time? Well, the time that you set. So it's like you clock in. So like right now I clock in at 7.30. I'm, I'm late these days compared to the six. <laughs> Sleeping in. But so every day I'm at work ready to work. Why so early? Why so early? Early. That's late. I know. But like what if they get to the office at 9.30 and go through some notes and and uh, start around 10, like most well, agents do. I mean, then every- And then they're up till midnight negotiating contracts. Yeah, right? no, stop. Stop that, don't do that. <laughs> What's important about early? What's that? What's important about early? And shouldn't you be calling <clears throat> people, you shouldn't call them at eight or nine. You should wait till about nine thirty or 10 when they wake up. <laughs> or, I know, that those are realtors that wake up at 10, I forgot. Well, let me tell you a story. So there was this, I was trying to break into a higher end market and there's not a ton of expireds that were in our market at the time that I was trying to do this. And so there was one that came up and it was over 300,000, which was big because my average price point was under 100. And I was so nervous about calling her. So I showed up in her driveway at 7.30 and she was leaving for work, but I, I blocked her in and she did sign. <laughs> You she, blocked her in the driveway? Yeah. She set an appointment with me and then she signed the contract. So a lot of expired people that have expired listings, they want an agent that has a little hustle and that's going to work for them. And that apparently showed her that I would. And we did sell the house. So right. that was good. 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 <laughs> Fantastic. What's that? Can you go through your entire morning routine with us? Sure. So arrive at the office ready to work. Um, I role play and then I get on the phone at eight. Ish. And why do you get on at eight? Well, so people that I know that are awake, I talk to them beforehand. Um, and then I want to be the first person that talks to them. So, yeah. Okay. So then that goes until 850. And then I take a break at 850. And in that time, I can get in between 12 and 14 contacts and then the 10 minute break, and then I start again right at nine. So the other thing is, is I really start on time. It's like critical. Like if you're like on the phone at eight, like it should be ringing, not you're getting ready to dial. Like it should be ringing. And then I go from nine to 9.50. And then at 9.50, our team and I um, have like a, we call it a charter, but it's like a mission statement and it has like a little interpretive dance. It's hilarious. Um, so we do that all together and we do a quick sales header. What's that? You do the dance for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a group effort, it Carly. A, yeah, you have to be initiated first and then you can oh, okay, okay. It's kind of like a sorority slash frat house where we are the, you know, the beer fridge is stocked with Miller Lite and vodka. And they make a lot of money and they have a lot of fun. <laughs> During the day, 
early days. Yeah, we're gone by four or five. Okay. We're out of there. Yeah. Now you work long weekends, right? No. <laughs> well, tell me about tell me about buyers. What? Buyers. What? Buy. You, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We'll skip that. I didn't think you knew about them. When you're calling, who do you prioritize? How do you prioritize? Your uh, I do new fizz or new expireds, new fizzbos, and then old expireds, old fizzbos. Uh, circle prospecting. Well, sphere of influence, and then circle prospecting. Okay. How you doing? Your at this point, you've got past clients. You've got sphere of influence. Yeah. So we're like right now we're throwing we're going to throw a client party, and so we're calling them about that. It's going to be really fun. Good. I know. Uh, what's your, uh, outside of expired the FISBOs, what's your best lead? I mean, what's your best source of business? Well, we have a 40% repeat and referral business. So it is mostly people that, that we know, but the other 60% is expired and FISBOs. Gotcha, we actually gotcha. do a pretty big FISBO business um, because most for sale by owners, they, they want to list. And I understand they want to try it on their own. And I just say, you know, I've seen this movie before. I know how it ends. <laughs> and <laughs> may I share with you how it ends? I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, but they're just follow up. They they want to try it, and that's fine. But we know that they will within four weeks they will end up listing an agent. And it, I want it to be us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. The folks in Dallas, Phoenix, and Minneapolis. What else on the list? On the list. Did you want them to complete between now and next week to be implementing between now and next oh, week? Oh, a new else? thing that I came across were. I'm not tech savvy, so I apologize if this is old news, but podcasts, there's like a lot of really great podcasts. The one that I, I like the mindset ones. There's one, um, the one thing that's, I really enjoy that podcast and Tony Robbins has one that I really enjoy too. There's a lot of other real estate ones, but I like those for mindset. So you're asking them to watch uh, positive mindset material yes. every day, every, every day. week, every day, every day, when? in the morning when so i think well when you first Nine. no <laughs> so when i get 5 up 5 a.m yeah, when i get up at 5 30 i actually have a role play partner in miami and we say our affirmations to each other out loud every day okay and so that yeah it's really fun and it's a great way to start the day mm -hmm. because her affirmations are like i mean they're awesome and they get me energized and then i say mine and we started adding movement to them like tony robbins suggested there's a lot of dancing going on, I'm sure you can, <laughs> in our office, yeah, and we're terrible, P.S. Um, and so then when you listen to the podcast while you're getting ready, it just, whatever goes in your brain is what whatever you plant will grow. So you can either plant weeds or you can plant tulips or whatever. Okay. I'm not so the, they're starting early, early in the day with some positive uh, little yeah. video clips. Mm-hmm. What else is on the list between now and next week that they need to do so they can well, start role taking play one, partners. role play partners? Role, and I would do a different one every day um, and have them be in different markets because I've had a role play partner in Italy before. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Miami. I mean, all over. So it's fun. I noticed a question. What do you mean by circle prospecting? What service do you use for circle prospecting? Oh, so circle prospecting is when we have a listing taken or we sell and when we sell a listing, we call the neighborhood around it to, I mean, we're trying to get more listings around it. And so we use coal realty resource. Through I think Vulcan. it's attached. It's attached to Vulcan. Yeah. It's part of Vulcan seven. Yeah. Yep. So you go to Vulcan seven, get neighborhood data That's where it is. and there you go off to the race. And it gives you cell phone numbers and home numbers, which I like. It's a new feature on there. Okay, where are they finding a role play partner? Where are they going to find one? Um, well, I found mine from different events. So, like, if you, I mean, you, if you, when you get a coach, they'll suggest different events for you, like either Mike Ferry or Tony Robbins or the Keller Williams stuff, or I'm sure like all of those places. The whole Banker Sutton, Remax, a lot of Sotheby's, different. Yeah. yeah, Tom Ferry, a lot of different organizations promoting. Yeah, and my role play partners are from different. Um, they're not all like the same brokerage that I am. They're all different. So I. Someone's asking, can you guys do a little role playing for us? Maybe like pretend you're calling an expired listing. Sure. Carly, why don't, yeah, she could call you, Carly. I think she should call you, Ren. All right. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Hey, Ring. Hello. 
Hi, Ren. Yes. Hey, Ren. This is Jennifer Mertland. I'm a local real estate agent. I saw that your house on 123 Main Street had come off the computer as an expired listing this morning. Yeah. I, yeah. I was calling to see what are your plans for interviewing uh, agents. I just got a call like this a minute ago. And this little, it's 8.03 a.m. We got two agents working today out of 5,000. Wow. Well, let me ask you, Ren, if your house had sold, where were you planning on moving? Uh, I was going to. Um, Butte, Montana. Butte, Montana. Yes. That sounds great. What takes you there? Well, take uh, just uh, uh, quality of life. Just, awesome. Yeah. 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 Get out of the Actually, city. Actually, to be honest, uh, I be honest, uh, I've started a job up there, and I'm back and forth. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna work better for you to be in Montana. Yeah. What was your original time frame for being there? Now. Oh, that's why you put your house on the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I understand. So send me something. Uh, just you want to mail me something? Sure, I definitely we're can. We're probably going. You know, we're uh, we'll be going back on the market with uh, gotcha. with Cindy Lou. Oh, okay. The same agent as last time. Yeah. I gotcha. So I'm curious. A lot of people take this opportunity to talk with other agents to see if maybe there's a different marketing plan that can get a different result. Is yeah. that something that you'd be open to? Well, Cindy Lou's tried so hard. Yeah. She held it open nine times. Oh my gosh. I'm sure that she called everybody she knew. Yeah. She held it open nine times. Yeah, she, she called did. all the agents in yeah, her office, all of her buyers. I couldn't do that to her. Oh my gosh. She definitely did the best that she could, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, Ren, actually, we're going to be in your neighborhood later on this afternoon. Are you available to speak around 4 or is 4.30 better? You're over here? Um, yeah, we're going to be over there talking to one of your neighbors. I guess that won't hurt. No. Uh, 4 o'clock. Because you really want to be in Montana, right? Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand. Four, four, four o'clock works yeah. for you? Yeah. Okay, great. Is your wife going to be home? I see there's a Sally on the deed as well. Yes. Perfect. That's right. That's Sally Mays, what you're seeing. Sally is all the student loan deed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. Well, then we'll see you both at four o'clock. Good. Okay? All right. Great. great. So okay. obviously you've done this a lot yeah, and you. it just flows Yeah. and people have fun with it. Yeah. Because most people are frozen and frigid and it doesn't sound too good, and they get mad. Who gets mad? The seller. It, not in your case, apparently. Oh. You know, flows with well, you. honestly, if the seller is upset, that's actually a really good thing. Okay. Because it's easier to deal with an upset person because we know we know why they're upset. Their house didn't sell. I mean, how pissed off would you be? Mm -hmm. Whereas if somebody is calm, I, I question the motivation. Mm -hmm. Because I would be upset if I was going to pay somebody ten thousand dollars or more to sell my house and then it didn't work. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money. It's a lot of money in the, in yeah, Ohio. That's right. <laughs> so they're mad. So they're all mad. Then what do you do? That's great. So Watch how do you at approach? House. Oh no. How do you approach that uh, well, conversation? They're when, all mad. That's good because I can get mad too. So okay. and I. Is that where you go with them? Yeah. You get mad about the whole thing. Well, yeah. Okay. So. For us, when when I'm talking to somebody and they're mad, I just take that on, and mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm mad too because it is infuriating. Like, I I mean, I would be just like them, so I get it. So then, when you get mad with them, they actually calm down, and then they listen because they feel like they're being heard when they weren't. They didn't feel like they were being listened to before. So you know, like you mirror and match their anger. Yes. Okay. If they cuss, I cuss. That okay. works well for me, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Like, That's I, great. Yeah, I kind of said, you know, I'm going to be in the neighborhood, so I'll just stop by. I feel like it makes it a little easier for them to say It that. does. Well, and plus, I've already said usually that I'm a local agent. Uh -huh. So it's like, well, we'll already be there. And most of the time, I mean, we're, we have a, I mean, we have a fairly large territory, but we're also close to everything. And so while I'm there, you just, I just door knock on either side of it, on five, on either side and 10 across. Tell me Which that. is a trick that you taught me. I did. I don't know. <laughs> well, somebody else taught me that one. So, so tell me this again. So you go over there before you get there. You're knocking on Just door knock. Five doors to the left of their house. Of their house. Five to the right and, and then across. across. And what do you tell those people? Well, I'm looking for listings. What do you say? Well, I say the market is really hot right now. And have you thought about selling? Okay. And, and they will say yes or no. Okay. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Okay, and you get... Uh, well, if a house is actually sold in that neighborhood or if we have actually listed one, then I'll say that. Mm -hmm. We've just listed a home or sold a home. And it doesn't even have to be like our team. Mm -hmm. If any house from any anybody, company, any, any company, company it's, yeah, it doesn't matter. Gotcha. Wow. But usually, I'll, I mean, it depends on... You could say this neighborhood is really hot. 
Have you thought about moving? Where would you move if you did move? So no fear of talking to people because uh, we're getting it's we're getting more recent generations are getting to where they don't actually want to speak to them. Oh well, good. More money for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll actually speak to them. Yes. Strangers. Well, everybody was a stranger. You won't text them first or wait till they come to your open house. No, but if they don't answer, I do text. And the expires, I started texting um, a Storyteller video. Oh, Storyteller, which is, if you're a Vulcan 7 customer, you can be involved with Storyteller video, which is right there at the top of your, actually it will be tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow yes. you'll see Storyteller and you can be involved in those videos. But I'm only, if I do anything other than like call or door knock, mm -hmm. it is in order to get the personal conversation. Because if people don't answer, when you text them, can I call you? They usually say yes, mm -hmm. which is so weird to me. It's like they pick up the damn phone, <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> so then I can call them. Good, good, good. Someone asked you, do what? you bring any information or do you bring anything when you go door knocking? I have like a flyer. We have a um, certified listing program. So I just have like a little door hanger. Some just whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just create something. It or I think I got some on Lady Printing the first time, and they were really cheap. And then you just hang them. Make them an obnoxious color. That's my recommendation. Ah. <laughs> like bright green or something obnoxious that they see, because hardly anybody uses their front door. Yeah. And it's a way of counting. Why when I would do that, I would print. I'd go to go at uh, six a.m. when nobody was at the office and. Because you could use the copier you want. I was printing up 300 at a time. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and use it to count. I'd put them in stacks of 50, and I knew I went to 50. I knocked on 50 doors to talk to them, and I'd leave that. Oh, that that's was, a good idea. That was, that was a way of counting. Well, if you're going to do flyers, though, I recommend bringing some rubber bands with you because sometimes the doors, you can't stick the flyer in, so you have to wrap them. Oh, that's true. Do you know what I'm saying? I just laid them parts away under the mat. Well, it rains a lot here in Cincinnati. That's true. That's true. That's true. Good. Do you track your numbers? Of course. How well, I don't know. Last week's guest was in a little battle with his coach about tracking numbers, so I'm just asking. Well, okay. So if I know that when I make 30 contacts, I set two appointments, and I'm at 28 contacts, and I haven't set an appointment, what am I going to do? Right. Well, nobody's answering, but I'm going to call two people exactly. because I know the next you know. two calls are appointments. But if I don't track it, so you know your batting I wouldn't average. know. You know your batting average. Well, yeah, because I've been tracking it for years. Okay, good. And it does change and ebb and flow because right now we don't have a lot of expireds. So we have to do a lot more circle prospecting. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is the circle prospecting, uh, it used to be like 80 to 1. So like for 80 of those, I would get one, but now it's 40 to 1. Mm -hmm. So they have actually gotten better. They're like listings and hiding. So I like a hunter. Good. <laughs> like a Good. panther. I know. Or something. They're out there. And <laughs> they're they, there. They're, they're, they're just, just waiting you, you for just, you. Yeah. So someone asked me, do you call expireds on Saturday and Sundays? Yeah. So Saturday we call from 9 to 11, and then Sunday we do 4 to 6. So those are the best times. And you say we, so you have a team. Can you tell us about your team? How much you sure, play? they're fabulous people, of course. <laughs> they're all very awesome. Um, so we have Mariana, who has our operations side. Um, so she's great. She does all the paperwork because we do it wrong. And we do it wrong so that she does it. Well, and we're terrible at it. <laughs> so that helps. And then our lead listing agent is Alan Wisman. He does a great job with all the listings. And we have uh, Amber, Robbie, and Christy agents also cool. okay. and then me okay. so when I ask about buyers and she doesn't know what I'm talking about you know uh, Amber and Christy and Robbie <laughs> they know what buyers, they know what buyers are well, those are the people you sold the home they have nowhere to only live only if they're homeless if will they're we homeless. take a buyer yeah, but even then we'll like do how about a past client that calls you up it's, and well, I need to buy some immediately well I would do a consultation with them to make to make sure that they are buying immediately. If my mom wanted to buy a house, I would do a consultation with her to make sure that she was <laughs> motivated and ready, especially people you know. Because yeah, yeah. they have like a different, they know you personally. Mm -hmm. So it's wasting your time. Exactly. Thank you. And I don't like that. That makes me crazy. So I would, you know, I would pair them with the buyer's agent that was going to be best able to handle it because I, it's not me. Yeah. I'm the best ISA. <laughs> yeah. so 
someone's calling and you get a voicemail, do you leave a voicemail? I don't. Now I know in Vulcan you can like set up a voicemail and I know um, Alan on my team, he does. I'm just more of old school. Like I'll call him back 30 times at different times or text them or whatever until I get them to answer. Okay. I mean, I think it just depends it on works. if you believe that they works. will reply or not. Like, I don't think that they will. So it's a waste of time because by the time I'm leaving a message, then I could have made three more calls. But I think like other people can set it up so it does it automatically. You move to the next. I'm just not savvy. I can barely turn on the computer, honestly. There I just go. got an iPhone. But then you do iPing. Well, yeah, I like iPing because I don't have to do it. So that, do you know what that is, Carly? I ping the neighborhood. I P I N G the neighborhood.com. So yes. So we pick, so our goals have been to increase our average price point. Obviously 80,000 wasn't going to cut it. So in order to do that, we didn't have listings in those neighborhoods. So we chose the neighborhoods that are, are we want our average price point to be between 250,000 and 400,000. That's like a sweet spot for us. And so we picked neighborhoods that were transient that didn't have like one agent that kind of dominated, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And so then we, the iPing sends out, I don't fully understand it, but basically we give them a list and then on the computer, it'll send them like a banner of like the team synergy certified listing program and they can like click on it. I mean, I don't know all of it, but what it does is it creates inbound calls for us. Which is awesome. Yeah, I'll take yeah. come list me calls come list, for sure. Yeah, come list me. Come list me. Yeah. And you get our work numbers too. Yeah, I like the work numbers because yeah. people Se are at work. Yeah. yeah, people are at work and they'll answer that phone even though they won't answer their cell phone. So yeah. I like the work numbers. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. You should do that a long time ago. I know, I know. But we do it now. I had to go to the work. I've been to several people's work when With I couldn't get a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> you just set an appointment. I want to have my hair done. Right. Really. Actually. <laughs> I need to list your house. Yeah. Yes. Sign here. Don't cut my hair. Okay. <laughs> um, so what else? The Dallas, Phoenix, and oh, Minneapolis. Gosh. What else do they need to do between now and next week? Besides get a coach, track their numbers. And that's a lot in a week. Okay. All right. Well, that'll work. Let's let's look at questions. What time do you typically door knock? How many times per week? Oh, good question. So door knocking and um is usually best after three so we'll usually take a break from calling unless we're going to call like our spirit pass client between we'll call until noon and then take a break until about three um and then that's a good time to go door knocking until i mean in the summertime you can door knock longer but um in the winter it gets a little dark so from three to six okay great so i mean i've door knocked in the rain in the okay. snow no, I, I door knock on holidays because I want people to feel bad for me and I try to play a game. Oh, like, that's the best on way. Memorial Day, I'm like, how many hot dogs and beers can I get? Or like, who's going to invite me into their party? Nice. These that's are good. It. Yeah. It's fun. That works. They're like, you're crazy. And I'm like, I know. And if I was selling your house, I'd be crazy about that. Like, wait until I have to make money. Yeah. How do I respond to, I want to wait to list until later, uh, after the holidays? After that. Well, I mean... I don't really know why you would wait. So I would just find out a little bit more about their motivation. So what, I assume they weren't expired. So what prompted you to put the house on the market in the first place? Or I would dig more into that. And then the thing about uh, listing during the holidays is actually the house shows a lot better and you have a lot more emotional buyers, which as a seller, that increases your bottom line dramatically. So I think first you have to tap into their motivation before you like kind of. You got to ask uh, several a questions, questions, figure out where they're coming from. Yeah. Then craft the responses Correct. and there are a variety of responses. But there's a reason why they, so if they weren't an expired mm -hmm. and they want to wait, well, <laughs> the snarky remark is, do you always postpone your goals? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. Um, How many contacts do you make in a day? A minimum of 30, which takes less than three hours. Do you do, you do mailings to cards, FISBOs, or is it better to call? Do I don't do mail both? them anything. Yeah. Mailing is really passive, it's so you might as well just knock on the door because they're getting a stack of mail. And I, you know, 
the last time I sold a house by mail was never. <laughs> uh, generally speaking, it's very infrequent. So, you know, they're throwing it away anyway. Yeah, but they, you add up all the expense and the labor involved in the process and the postage. It, it'll, well, pay the for time, the, it'll pay for the one commission check. That by the you got time it gets that. there, I've already been there. Yeah. You're done. You're yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. You said email. Uh, there's somebody who's running a little commercial. Okay. And that, yeah. Who else? Any, any other questions? Uh, let's see. How do you go from two, three, four listings per month to 16 listings last month? Uh, I don't know what that means because she didn't do uh, how did you how do you go for, how would someone oh. if somebody's taking only a two three or four listings a month now and they want to go to two three or four a week I would say I mean how do you do the four times do, deal? well it actually like compounds on itself it's like compound interest which is like my favorite thing but <laughs> it if you when you make 30 contacts a day and you have to get it within the first three hours so like 9 10 11 you make your 30 contacts in a few years, it will compound on itself, but you have to do it every day. All you have to do is show up on time, do your work every day, and ta-da! There you go. Yay! It's a magic trick. Yeah. Just work. Yeah, yeah let's see. Uh, <laughs> with Fizzos, do you go preview to see them face-to-face -face or only go to qualified appointments? Do you uh, email or mail pre-listing packages before yes. you go? Okay, so Fizz. For sale by owners, I call them. I don't always go. Every once in a while I will, but you get into, if you do that, you'll just get into a pattern of being upset if they're not ready to sign. So I don't really do that. What the best thing to do is, is find out when they're open houses, and let's say it's from two to four, and show up at four after nobody came to their open house. There you go. A uh, quick answer on the circle prospecting. So what, what systems connected to Vulcan 7 for the coal is look for, oh, really? go to the home page where it says home and go to get neighborhood data and it's all there. Okay. Uh, you can sign up with coal, get your coal subscription and it's, it's hooked, they're hooked together. Can you give us more information on iPing? Go there, go to ipingthehood.com or ipingtheneighborhood.com and, um, uh, I Googled it, couldn't find information on it. Type in the exact address, I-B-I-N-G, the neighborhood.com. It's there. Okay. Um, uh, what would you need to do to take 30 listings per month? Great yes, question. Great question. Great question. Tell me. What do you need to do to take 30? Get better at my scripts, obviously. There you go. Maybe. And make more calls. So really. Maybe the, take 60 here, calls. Here's the answer to that. What does she need to let go of that she's doing that she shouldn't be doing? That's an even better What do you question. need to let go of? Yes. What do you need to let go of that somebody else on the team can do? Yeah, no, that's a question. Because if you look question. at the time per hour, she's making 250 to $300 an hour when she's looking for business. Mm -hmm. She just needs to do more of it. Yeah. Can you get to, can you, can you get to, I mean, you're yes. 16 a month. Can you get to 25 a month? Yes. Great question. Yeah. Love Thank that. You. That's Can't, great. Would you, well, whoever said that? that from Jess, Jess W, from Jess W, Jess, would you ask her that every day? <laughs> Text me. Text her that <laughs> every day. Every, every day. Oh, your Frisbo script. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like the Jackie Kravitz one. Okay. Um, so it kind of depends on how the Fisbo answers. So you want to like mirror and match them. Um, and it's, if I can net you more money than you can net yourself, is that something that you would be interested in taking a look at? And they always say yes. And then that's why we need to meet. How's Tuesday at four or five? Okay. That's it. It's pretty great. simple. All right. Great, great, great. And I'm sure, yeah, they say like, if it's, easy like if you would have hired and if you thought an agent could get you more money you would have hired one by now right yeah, yeah. can you do a FISBO role play seems like they're overpriced a lot of the times they are always overpriced that's the good <laughs> news if they weren't they wouldn't be there we would be out of the job <laughs> <laughs> um so the FISBOs are most of them they want to try it on their own so it's really just the follow-up game so if you just talk to them at first, ask for the appointment. If they don't give it to you, ask when the um, open house is and go at the last, at the end of the open house um, and then bring list. Oh my gosh, always carry two signs with you, two lock boxes with you 
and two contracts with you. That is one thing they can do That's between now and next between week. Between now and next week. Yeah, I mean, I had this exercise every day. I pulled my car around. I put in three signs, three lock boxes, everything. For oh, you did three? I should I do did. three if I'm going to take and 30 then, less and, things. And then I unloaded every day what was left. There were days where I took three listings. Yeah. You know, a four, a 5.30, and a seven. And they're like, but my listing presentation is that long. What? You know, you know that means. Yeah. How long is your listing presentation? Well, we do a pre-listing packet. So by the time we get there, it's usually about 30 minutes. And it's because we're walking around the house. But they, a lot of times, have already filled out, like, the disclosures. And then we send the contract with the price. So they already know what it. You give them the price before you even meet with them. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what the relevant houses show is what the price is. I mean, I don't make it up, right. you know, <laughs> so it's what it is. It's what the, their neighbors bought and sold for. So it's pretty simple. Know. Somebody was asking what your definition of a contact is. A contact is a voice to voice conversation. So, well, I also count people that like tell me to F off and hang up. That's a contact. They answer. Well, it is. That's, yeah, and that's fair enough. The only the only time you wouldn't is if a if a tiny child answered the phone. No, you right. Wouldn't, you wouldn't count they wouldn't that because they can't. Either. They, they can't give you the, the proper information. Right. So, so they, yeah, you got to look at what you're tracking, folks. Stop tracking attempts or dials. You'll make yourself People call crazy. them calls. Well, what happens is they go. I call. I called 137 people. Well, how many of them answered? Nine. <laughs> I mean, you're tracking a big number. Stop it. It's like people that said, I did blank millions in sales. You're tracking a big number. Stop it. Rob Gleinert, who's probably watching this, he's Beverly Hills, he was, you know, he was always saying how much volume he sold and millions he made and, and until he was required to only state how many homes he sold. Oh. Well, he was only selling like nine to 12 homes. And then his sales went way up. Because he was only allowed to tell people how many homes he sold. Nice. And it was embarrassing. Yeah, it was embarrassing. <laughs> Although he was rich selling nine homes. Good for him. So, you know, you got to, you know, track the lower number. Well, and the, the call attempts don't equal the money. What equals the money is the conversation. So, like, mm -hmm. I like to track the money. Yeah. So, like, how many conversations do I do I need in order to get the appointments and how many appointments do I need to get the listings and how many listings do I want? And then I can backtrack the whole thing. Makes your life a lot easier. Then you don't have to think you just go. What do you think Carly? Uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Um... How far back do you go in old expireds and old Fizbo's? Well, because we don't have a lot of expireds, we've been going back to 2012 actually. And there's some good ones in there. Yeah. Because people like they are think have a 2012 mentality, which the world is very different. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, this was amazing, and you a lot of you may have referrals from Cincinnati, and or if Northern you do, Kentucky. or Northern Kentucky, <laughs> it's kind of a big metropolitan area yeah. here. And they should. The website is TeamSynergy.com. Spelled. Oh, it's spelled weird, of course. So it's team, T-E-A-M, and then S-Y-N-E-R-G-I dot com. Good. Or you can call me. I'll okay. give you my right. numbers, okay? Sure. 513-578-2633. Uh, three, three. You're going to end up with a bunch of role play partners. Yes, <laughs> let's do it. Cool. All right, Kelly, it's always Thank good you, to Carly. see you in San Diego. We'll have a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. See you next week when we have Kari Kohler here and the week after Brianne Lowe. And they're all taking a lot of listings. Use the copycat principle. Take the Vulcan 7 challenge. Yep. See you next week, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. 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 It's time for our ice cream. <laughs> you did your job. You did your ice cream. Graders, mint chocolate chip. See you next week, everybody. <laughs>